welcome to my session on creating music with code you're going to learn something new today so let's start just a second okay so who am i about me i'm a flutter developer organizer at visathon and i'm proud to say that we have partnered with hack quarantine i'm also a mozillian i support open and a private web and lastly I am a co-organizer of Flutter Voyager community. I am currently exploring Sonic Pi and Pixel Art. Sonic Pi is the tool that we are going to use today to make music. And on the right is Pixel Art version of, version of myself. So, moving on. What's Sonic Pi? Sonic Pi is a code based creation, music creation and performance tool. This basically means that you can create and mix music by code and the code is in ruby and you don't need to learn ruby to code code in sonic pi so don't worry about that so i'm going to show you where to download sonic pi just a second and yeah you can go to sonicpi.net and here, as you can see, this is where I got the definition from and uh, it's brought to you by Sam Aaron and the Sonic Pi core team, mainly it's Sam and yeah, you can download from here in your, in your PC and it's also available for Raspberry Pi, which is very, very interesting. So now that I've shown you where to download it, let's move on yeah so things we should know and <clears throat> wait a second so yeah so moving on we'll be learning a few things before we start and this is right right here is the sonic pi's user interface which i'll show you later on mm, next up we have the piano yeah we'll take a look at the notes of a piano and um, I'll guide you through the first one is the C then it's called a C sharp or the D flat then it's called the D then it's D sharp or E flat F F sharp or G flat G G sharp or A flat A A sharp or B flat B and so on and so forth and <clears throat> okay so what's next numbers and notes here is a cheat sheet now every note represents a number as you can see the c 0 12 24 36 48 and starting from 0 uh, starting from 0 there are numbers and there are octaves over here octave numbers and uh, now octave number number is like a set of notes at a particular frequency the higher the octave number the higher the frequency so moving on so yeah that's about it for now we'll start coding on sonic pi and wait a second i'll switch my screen yeah so this is what the sonic pi looks like and at first glance you can see on the top top left there's a bunch of commands the run command is when you want to run your code you can stop it by clicking on stop you can record it so that you can export it to a wav file and finally you can save and load your code as well on the top right uh, there are the size commands and you can increase and decrease the size of your text in your editor uh, after that there's the scope which I already have right now. This is the monoscope. And uh, after that, there's the info, the help, and the preferences if you want to change the settings. Below your scope, you have, you have your logs. And at the bottom is the help, the help tool, which is very useful, by the way. So yeah, let's not waste any time and let's start. And we'll play a note let's say and this is how you play a note you write play 
and then a colon and then you and then you type the note that you want to play for example i want to play c so i'm going to write play colon and c let's test it out how this goes yep pretty nice we played our first we <laughs> we created our first music and you can also change the octave numbers so i want the c at the third octave so i'll play c3 i'll i want c at the seventh octave so i'll, I'll play c7 yeah so mm, you can also play the note by its number and if you remember i showed you a chart a cheat sheet i'll show it again for you wait yeah in the in here you can see that every note in accordance to its octave number shows shows a key number as well so for example a c7 would have the 96 number and you can even play by using numbers and let's try it out i think i believe it was 96 <laughs> i already forgot and when you're playing with a number you don't have to use a colon at all yep that's it so that's how you use numbers as well and one thing if you remember i'm going back to my notes again i'm going to play c4 this sounds very different than a normal piano that's because it uses a synth now and we can change the synth value by going and typing the use synth command here i'll show you use synth and <clears throat> this and then you add a colon and you can select from list of synthesizers available in sonify right now my recorder doesn't show the list but if you do it on yours on your device you'll be able to see so I'm selecting the piano synth and my note is going to sound like a piano. Um, so yeah, let's play. See, it sounds like a piano now. You can also try a um, bunch of other synths which are very, very, you know, different. Let's try something like um, chip lead. So every synth has some configuration which makes whatever the notes that you play, it makes them, you know, change according to the synth's configuration. I'm going to remove this now. Now, I like this note a lot. So, I'm going to play this once again, but the problem here is that SonicPy is so fast that it won't, it won't be able to recognize when to, I mean, computer is so fast that it will play both commands at once. It, it won't wait for this command to end and it and will just start this at the same time. So for that, we have the sleep command and we can tell the computer okay just stop for a second so this is the second stop for a second and then play this command so yeah as you see i can change the sleep values i can change it change it to three so this is the sleep command and that's how you use the sleep command now every note has different uh, parameters and you can add different parameters to a note by adding comma and then you'll have a bunch of parameters on your screen um, one such parameter is the pan parameter and 
with this you can change the di direction of sound in 2d mm, for example you can play sound on your right and you can play sound in your left or in the or in the middle um so i'll show you what exactly it means i'm going to use minus one the value ranges from minus one to one minus one is left and one is right this is not going to make sense right now but you'll understand once i play this and those who have headphones will realize what i'm talking about see so it, so it played on the on the left and i used the value as minus one minus one stands for left and if you want to play it on the right you add one and if you want it the default is zero which you play in between which is what we normally get now there is also the amp parameter amp parameter basically increases and you can increase and decrease the volume and it starts from zero which is which won't play anything at all the default is one and you can increase it so if i add four my voice is now louder i mean my note is now louder actually so yeah so that's the amp parameter for you now i'm going to decrease it for now now all musical sounds have something in common they have to start at some point they have to stay on for some point and they and then they fade away so for that we have the attack decay sustain and release parameters i'm not going too deep into all of them but release is one such command when you type in release you can tell sonic pi that um, how soon you want to how soon you want the note to end so if i type in release and 0.25 and then run it you can see it it stops quicker it's not it doesn't last as long as a normal command would so it stops you know quicker so similarly there is sustain decay attack parameters as well you can check out in the documentation i'll link it in the chat and yeah you can play on your own so now that we're done with this um, i want to show i want to show you something that's really cool and they are called samples now sonic pi has some inbuilt samples that have been pre-recorded and you can play a sample using the sample command so i'll write in sample colon and there's a list of samples and i can select any sample that i want i'm going to use the bd horse and i'll play it see this one gave me a, a nice you know a kick and there are a lot of samples for example ambience i can try for glass hmm? I guess hum. See, so this gave me a really soothing, soothing voice. So these are samples, and some of them, some of the cool samples are also loops. Now, loop samples usually last longer than normal samples. I'll show you one. This one is called loop. I mean, full. pretty cool right so those are loop i mean those are loop samples and samples for you and i'm going to change it back to bd horse now you can also have parameters for samples as well you can increase the amp change the pan like so see interesting right yeah so that's parameters and samples for you you can try it out yourself you can change the samples and so on and so forth 
no. You can also assign the variables in Sonic Pi. Uh, actually, you can do a lot of basic programming and you can assign variables like this. I'm going to name my variable, let's say lift, and I'm going to give it a value of minus one. Now, I'm going to use this in my BD host sample and the pan should be left. I just give it the variable and that's it. No, pretty cool, right? Now, I really like this bit a lot, actually. So I want to play it again and again, again and again. But the thing is, rather than typing it forever, which I probably might, if I want to repeat it, I can use loops. I'm sorry, I can use loops. For this, we can, to have a loop, we can have something like this. Loop, do, the end. And all your code, all your code that you want to loop goes in the middle. So, I'm going to cut this, paste it in, and then I'm going to actually sleep for a second. Every loop, every loop must have at least one sleep command because once it goes in before this actually stops playing it will loop it will go back to the loop again and this will create a big mess and you'll get an error actually so i'm going to sleep it for a second so every second my sample should be playing Pretty cool, huh? Now, what I want to do is you can also have random values in, and random functions in Sonic Pi. One such is the rrand function, and I'm going to use this in my pan. I'm going to type rrand and minus one to one. So, what this will do is from minus one to one it will give me a random number starting from minus one to one and every time my loop goes in I'll get a random number see so that's the random method for you now mm, let's see now uh, I wanna I wanna add some something else to this. I want to add another loop. I want to add let's say some sample. I want to add a drum. I want to add a symbol actually. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna sleep for a second and then let's see. Whoa, wait, what happened there? Now my this this loop didn't get didn't get played at all. Why is that? Well now you see that even though I added a loop, it didn't play. The reason is that once it once it goes inside this loop or the first loop, it never gets out of it. It's like stuck in a loop forever and ever. So for this we have live loops. And what live loops do is that they keep running on in the background and meanwhile you can play other bunch of stuff as well. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a live loop and this is how you make a live loop. Live loop and you name a live loop by the way. So this is let's say my kick and I'm going to make this my symbol so now hopefully this should work pretty cool right now you can also add effects to your music um, to add effects you can do something like this 
first of all I'm going to remove this by the way I'm going to add to add effect you can type in with effects colon and select from a bunch of effects available by sonic available to you so I'm going to try the echo which is very common do and of course I'm going to have to end it so theoretically this should my this beat should you know play twice or play have an echo effect so that's what is gonna happen pretty amazing huh you can even change and add parameters to this by you know let's say phase is one parameter and what phase does is that if I add one it means that it will echo after one second so it will play the sound wait for a second and after after that it will echo it this is what it will sound like pretty interesting right so that's effects you can add multiple effects I'm going to remove this I'm going to add some reverb I hope it sounds different I think it sounds a bit different yes um, I can even add effects to my play command like this I can add some other effect like mm, let's see the HPF maybe which literally doesn't do anything I guess I don't know what I don't know why I can try the bit crusher so effects are really really cool and yeah so now I'm going to show you another cool thing I'll show you a few more parameters you can add so I'm going to use a sample and I'm going to try look for what sample do I want mm, I want a drum cowbell and there's a, there's a parameter called rate now rate controls how fast a sample is played one is the original speed 0 0.5 is half the speed and 2 is double the speed so if I write 0 0.5 oh yeah wait let me just show you how it normally sounds I'll add rate 0 0.5 see so it played it a bit slowly and it even decreased the frequency so if I add in 5, 4, let's say, the frequency changes as well as the speed. Now, interestingly, if I add minus 1, I mean, you can have negative values as well, by the way. And if I add minus 1, look what happens. Interesting, right? If you, with negative values, you can have, you can play the sound backwards and it's very very interesting now there's also the beat stretch command parameter i'm sorry and what it does is whatever sample that you're playing it it stretches or shrinks to exactly what number you give it to so if i type in three it will it will stretch or shrink it to three seconds if i type in one it will stretch or shrink it to one second Let's say if I write in 2, if I write in 3, interesting right, it's very very interesting. So yeah, um, now actually let's try some music now that we learned the basic stuff. Um, I have some you know pre-made samples for you, we're going to play that and I'll let you, I'll go through everything. So yeah, 
my first one is this i guess yep oh yeah first of all i forgot to tell you um i'm just going to make a live loop and i'm going to call it kick do i'm going to end it i'm going to play my sample bd horse i don't know why but i really like that <laughs> i don't know why i always use it sleep for a second Now what you can do is you can change the tempo of your of your music by using the use underscore BPM command. And what it does is this means use beats per minute. So normally it's 60 beats per minute, so it's one beat in a second. But if I increase it to let's say 120, it will double the speed. Cool, right? If I add in 30, it will be half. So the use BPM command can be used to set the tempo of your music. You can change it to whatever you like. And yeah, so let's move on. Okay, so here is my first sample, sample music and it's a live loop i gave it a random name and what i did it was pretty simple um the first part is pretty simple i played a sample the amp is 0.5 i slept for one second played another sample my snare then i played a cymbal now and i gave it a rate of two now here comes the interesting thing this sample also has this something weird written in here and I'll explain to you what it is this says range minus one 1.5 mirror tick I mean what is that so I'll explain it to you so in sonic 5 we also have a range function what a range function does is that it will give you you can you know step or you can have a, a list of values let's say one two three four five so it will have a list of values and you can generate this list by going it just directly like this from a number of one to five i and i want to have the step of one so what this means is that it will keep on increasing this value by one every time until it's five so what this means is that from a range of minus one to one i want to have a step of 0.5 which means it will go minus one minus 0 0.5 0 0 0.5 and then one and then it will stop so that what that's the range function and this right here is another interesting thing so oops yeah so this mirror what oh my god dude okay so this mirror what it does is that once i get the value of once i get the value of let's say minus one minus 0 0.5 0 0 0.5 and 1 what it will do is that once it loops through this then it will reverse it so next time i'll start from minus from 1 then go to 0 0.5 0 minus 0 0.5 and minus 1 so that's how you mirror it and this range as i sh as i told you actually gives you a list right so it will give you this entire list and um, since pan only accepts one number from minus one to one we we need to give it only one value out of this entire list out of this entire list we need to only give them one value how do we do that so for that we use the tick so what this does it this does is that it takes it increases the index oh my god dude okay it increases the index by by one every time the loop goes in so for the first loop it will go through minus one 
for second loop it will go to my minus 0 0.5 0 0 0.5 and 1 so it goes through each value one by one in an in a list so that's the mirror that's the range that's the range mirror and the tick for you let's play this let's see how this goes interesting right and I've stretched the peak to one second here this is very interesting so so now I'm going to move on to another sample mm, let's see okay so in this sample what I've done is I've used BPM 120 just like the previous sample I've used the BPM 120 and I've named my live loop check W <laughs> for some reason and what I'm doing here is I'm playing a sample stretching it to 15 seconds then I have another live loop so in sonic pi you can also nest your live loops and loops if you want to so this is another live loop inside my live loop I'm calling it tabla and I'm playing a particular tabla sample my amp is 0 0.5 I'm sleeping it for 3.7 seconds after that I'm playing another you know sample and the beat stretches 15 and because I want I've, I've slipped it for 15 seconds and the reason being that this beat this sample will play for 15 seconds along with this sample and if I if I let's say if I add one I mean use one then what will happen is before this you know before this actually stops this will start again so it will be very messy and I won't have a clear sound so that's why once this is over for 15 seconds this lasts for 15 seconds I'll sleep it and then I'll loop it again so let's see how it goes interesting right so this gives you a kind of you know some kind of a background music when you're in a in when you're playing some uh, some game or it gives you some kind of egyptian or indian feeling where you're in some market and you know there's some epic um epic chase going on or something like that <laughs> okay so that's how I've played with samples you can play everything by yourself by the way I mean you can change anything you want to um, uh, I'll link you the slides and my slides will have um, all the code for the session and yeah so moving on um, you can also by the way do your own thing by the way it's art there's no such thing as the right way or the wrong way even if I said uh, uh, I'm gonna sleep it for 15 seconds you can also sleep it for one second if you want to it sounds very interesting but there's no such thing as the right and the wrong way so you just have to do your own thing that's art uh, I can teach you the basics and everything but the rest completely depends on how you explore it yeah so what's next okay okay so I'm using this use debug method or use debug you know function and well this is actually you don't have to use this but since I'm recording and using this at the same time um, and my Mac doesn't actually have a great you know specification so you can use this and it'll, it'll make your process a bit faster in case you you're lagging in case your code is lagging so you don't need to type this you don't need to type this it's alright 
uh, I just typed it because I wanted for this recording. Yeah, so what have we done here? I'm adding a 16th. I'm calling, I mean, using the value 0 0.25 and I'm calling it 16th. And I'm sleeping, and in this first loop, I'm sleeping for 0 0.25, which is this 0 0.25 and in this one as well 0 0.25 and this one as well 0 0.25 so i'm i'm using this to you know reduce so in, in i can change it here anything and uh, all of this will be changed by itself very simple very standard anyways let's see how this turns out um i'm going to explain you what this is and what this is i'm going to explain it to you soon let's see but Let's see how this actually sounds. happened here well the first sound that you hear the pitch is this just the first live loop that's been played and I've called it melody and what this is that I've I've made a variable called the chord and what the chord does is that it picks a chord from you know from a scale and I'll explain you what a chord is so a chord is one note in a collection of good sounding notes and when I say good sounding notes it means that you know these notes generally sound good or they have some kind of tune to so it makes sense it makes some sense so if I don't know what to do let's say um, I've made every beat and everything I've made this you know wonderful kick but I don't know what exactly to do. I mean, this is just the beat. I need to add some melody. So if you're out of ideas, you can pick this chord method. What this will do is uh, you can write in any note. I've used the C3. And here in the second parameter, you get a list of the type of chord that you want to select. So um, the if you like colon and you'll get a bunch of options and I'm using a major major 7 oops major 7 and so every every chord will have a different tone to it and it will sound very different you can use C2 if you want you can even use C you can use E you can use F anything you want and this is the num octaves so what num octaves does is that it it defines the number of octaves you want this to you want this to scale so if i add three then in in a list of three octaves so in a list of it will take a list of three octaves and it will assign it a value let's say for the first time it will assign, assign it the value to the first octave then the second and then the third so yeah that's what it means basically you can add four you can add two you can add nine you can add zero as well and i'm going to keep it three so it will return me a note that from a list of other notes that sounds good together right so let's suppose note a b c and d sound good together then it will return me it will return me a the next time it will return me b next time it will return me c and then d so these notes sound, sound good together so that's why um sonic pi has this function to actually you know auto auto you know automatically give you a melody so that's it um that's it for this live loop what i've done in the next is 
that <clears throat> I have added a sample and after 10 seconds this particular bass trans you know C will be played and I've amped it to 0 0.4 pretty simple next is after sleeping for 5 seconds um I've added a kick and something new has come up it's called sync melody so what sync is basically if you if if you see i named this loop melody and i've i've added something like sync melody so what this will do is, is that um, i want both of my loops to start in a sync in a synchronized manner i want both of my loops these this one and this one to start in a synchronized manner so that it doesn't look off at all so no matter how um, you know if I sleep for 3.7 seconds then my my beats are going to be very very off so in order to you know have it sync together I'm going to use the sync command and which which loop I want to sync it to well I want to sync it to melody so that's why I use this then I'm using the sample and another new thing has come up which is the cutoff so cutoff is basically it cuts off your sound by some frequency by some frequency and so if you have some sound playing at let's say we'll do it we'll do this here so I can add some cutoff of let's say 60 and notice how it's a bit different than the normal one see so cutoff is where you can cut off some frequency from your sound and highest is 130 which is the normal frequency and if you type in 131 you'll get an error yep so you can increase and decrease the cutoff and that's what I have done over here cutoff is 80 I've cut it off to you know I've cut it off to cut off 80 frequency from this so it'll give me a different sound effect again I've slept it for 0 0.25 which is my 16th next up I've slipped for 10 seconds I've added another melody I've synced it or oh, I've used a different synthesizer now I've used a different synthesizer I've synced it to a melody now there's another different thing that comes over here what is this scale this Indian num octaves shuffle mirror well i know mirror but the rest of this makes no sense maybe the number octaves but this doesn't make sense at all, sense at all. so mm, skills are just like chords or should i say chords are like scales and scale if you scale if you scale um scale will give you a collection of notes uh, with different pitches that sound good together something like chords right yep so um what this does it does is that just like the chord it it will give me um i can assign note i want a scale from c3 and i can define what scale i want i can change there are actually a list of options over here so i can have something like augmented or I can have something like um, chromatic maybe so the list of different options that automatically give you a list of notes or that automatically gives you a list of notes that sound good together so that's what it is so I'm going to keep it Indian because I am an Indian <laughs> so uh, number of octaves I've kept it as one 
um, you can also ignore it's not necessary to keep this as a parameter then after that is the shuffle so remember I told you that we have a bunch of uh, random we can have a bunch of random values as well so shuffle is one such um, function that gives you a random value and I'll show you what it does so let's suppose this, this entire thing is a list of nodes chord will give you only one and scale will give you a list of nodes so have so in this list of nodes let's say if I have a B let's say if I have a B and the C node and what shuffle will do is will shuffle shuffle the entire list randomly so that's another way to randomize your list by the way and uh, yeah and I also mirrored it so if it shuffles as CBA then after the next loop it will mirror the CBA and it will become ABC right makes sense if you have any doubts you can ask in the chat this is a pre-recorded video and I'll be available in the chat to solve any queries or if you have anything to ask you can feel free to ask and you can also contact me on my Twitter by the way after the session so that's what this does I'll, I picked a scale I picked a note and I picked the scale I want I defined the number of octaves I shuffled the entire list then I mirrored it then this is a variable I've assigned to the list a variable which I've assigned to a list that I'll get now because I can't play an entire list with this command I can only play one note at a time so I'm going to take it remember I told you it go it'll go in a list one by one on a loop so I hope you understand this next is the amp I've amped it to 0.5 next is the cutoff which is 80 and I've added the release which I showed you earlier which is 0.25 I slept it for 0 0.25 sec 25 seconds again then uh, then the loop closes I've ended the loop now this loop I've added an echo effect to one of the samples and uh, I don't want to make it very very loud and I want it on every 10 seconds so um, I've echoed a sample so pretty straightforward I guess yeah let's hear this once again so what you hear in the beginning is this and after some time you'll start hearing the second melody after let's say around 15 seconds I guess uh, the second melody will start playing if you want to um what I'll do is I think I remember that I had something this I guess yep I'm going to use the first sample that I showed to you I'm going to copy it and this is it so I'm going to use I'm I'm not keeping the BPM outside I'm keeping the BPM inside and yep I'm going to sync it to my melody and hopefully this should work the beat which was earlier let me play it once again is now I've used it as another background to my this music that I'm that I made so let's see how this turns out
add a few beats to my current song so you can do that as well you can mix your beats you can mix your you know different types of you know different types of music and whatnot and i think i have another very interesting thing to show you right here in the helper desk um there's examples if you go to examples and you'll find a bunch of examples that have been made by the sonic pi core team and um people actually i forgot to tell you i think that sonic pi is open source and you can contribute to sonic pi if you want to and these are really you know a lot of these are really interesting examples that sonic pi has given us in the helper desk and one of my favorite examples is the fm noise it's made by sam aran the creator of sonic pi himself and you can see it's very very you know small it's very small and uh, a lot of things are you know just you don't i mean even i don't know what this is honestly speaking i don't know what the visor is i'm still learning i don't know what the slide is i don't know a lot of these things but i'll show you how powerful sonic pi is and here is where even if you use you know those costly you know softwares to create music those will kind of fail in here yeah i mean you have the ui for that but this is this is like how powerful you can imagine how powerful sonic pi is and i'll play it to you and it will sound very very mysterious and i love this something really different and it plays something really mysterious but this this is the kind of music i would used to hear in you know when i was a child and i used to you know watch some something like aliens invaded or something like that when i was you know small on discovery or i don't remember where it actually came this is something like that and yeah this is the kind of thing that you know this is the power of sonic pi and i still wouldn't say this is the power sonic pi is much much more powerful than this and uh, yeah i guess that's it for now i'm actually going to show you a couple of helpful resources i'll switch back to my slides and uh, that's about it um i hope you had a good time um these are a few helpful resources for you sonic pi has their own official tutorials um there's another thing called me hack it and they are wonderful for beginners and there's the sonic pi community as well where you can ask questions if you have any doubts if you have any queries you can ask them and i haven't linked it but the sonic pi's github uh, repository as well and if you have any issues with your sonic pi you can just you know paste your issue or uh, have an issue on the github yeah so that's it thank you and you can contact me on twitter github i mean you can't contact me on github and you can contact me on telegram and yeah that's it i hope you've enjoyed um i'm going to play um this music because we'll love it for a few minutes and then I'm going to end the stream thank you Thank <laughs> you.